What is going on YouTube? So this is going to be a totally different way of actually doing videos. This is going to be a longer styled one. So if you don't like longer styles, then uh, you already saw how long this is going to be. I just wouldn't watch it. And please do not complain. Uh, so first of all, just a little housekeeping. Obviously, the, the vlog started. We're going to be filming two more this coming week. So thank you for all the feedback and everything like that. So obviously, this is a self-development channel, personal development, whatever you want to call it. Um, obviously, that was my announcement to the world, to clients, to friends, to family, to social media. They already knew I was into personal development, but you know, obviously, YouTube, you know, isn't like Facebook or Instagram. I don't really talk about that as well. Is that's not my? I don't make any money from this, so there's like no reason for me to really bring it up there. It's kind of one of those things that I definitely am going to be coming around to. Like you know, everyone has their thing. Okay, and my thing is gonna be personal development. So obviously coming around to that is a little bit different because that has nothing to do with real estate. If it was like fitness and personal development, they're kind of like, you know, it's a mindset thing and, but real estate and self-development, you know, ironically enough though, when you go to a personal development like Tony Robbins or whatever, you'll find a ton of real estate agent, real estate agents because they know the only way to get better is by going to seminars like Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Grant Cardone, Brian Tracy, you know, the, the big names out there and then valuetainment. There's, there's a lot, honestly, the internet is really bringing out the personalities. Like there's no way it could have done this in the past. So what is this going to be about? The, the whole thing of these longer versions are going to be shot on usually probably once a week. I'm going to convert it to a audio. So it's going to be podcast format. You could do that. Uh, what is it? iTunes and Google Play and SoundCloud as well. And then you can obviously watch it visually. I used to do this, but it was just the podcast format. Now I'm going to be doing this and I'm finally trying to figure out how to do live. I, I literally like it's it's one of those things in my life that I you, you go and you go and you try and figure something out and most people give up. And I said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. So for the last three months, I've been researching just really on and off, but very heavily into going Facebook Live. And finally, finally, after all of these months, after all this research, after buying and returning all these things, all this equipment, all these wires, all these adapters, I finally have something that's going to potentially be on a DSLR, which this is a 70D with a mic. I'm mic'd up right now for good audio. Oh, I'm finally going to be able to do that. So that is amazing. I'm super excited about that. So you guys are going to be able to answer questions and or that's like my ultimate goal is to do what Gary Vaynerchuk does with his Ask Gary V. But I want to do it with three shows, kind of like Grant Cardone. He does it with a ton of shows. He has relationship shows. He does it with young people, does it with himself, you know, blah, blah, blah. That didn't really come out right. All right. So moving on. And the last thing is actually I'll just grab this. I'm going to go out of frame. But I just got Ray Dalio's book, uh, Principles. I am so excited to read this. Uh, so if you don't know Ray Dalio, I just want to make sure it's, uh, there we go. Ray Dalio, he has a 100, and he manages a 160 billion, with a B, billion dollar fund up in Connecticut. And he started all on his own. He also went all the way down, as you hear a lot of these stories, he went all the way down to bankrupt, or I don't know if bankruptcy, but he went all the way down where he needed to borrow $4,000. And, and I know exactly what he's talking about, Whoop, as I kick the camera. One of the biggest things is that when you start a business, especially when you're not taking investor money, I highly recommend you don't take any investor money because for two reasons. Number one is they want an exit. Those investors are investing for an exit. They're not investing so they can get cash flow. They want an exit either two ways. Number one is an IPO or by selling the company. And if you don't want to sell the company, like I don't want to sell my company, like this is the bottom part of the logo, Bodenston Properties, and I don't want to sell that. So Ray Dalio, and this is why you have to you have to keep on listening and watching different things. So Ray Dalio has a, it's actually up on my computer right now. Um, he had this interview and obviously highly recommend Flux. Flux is, that's why it's like an orange tint, orange, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it. And Ray Dalio, he was just on Bloomberg TV Markets and Finance. That's the name of the finance channel on YouTube. But it's Ray Dalio on Lifetime of Principles. Highly recommended. It's a 48-minute interview. I'm only 14 minutes in. I was actually eating lunch. I don't have my lunch around here. But he brought up something very important. And this is the thing of value. I keep on bringing up value. And people are like, okay, that's great. But like, how much does it cost? I'm like, you're not getting it. And I didn't for the longest time. I'm 32. It took me 
God knows how many years to get to the point where I understand that value of things is more important than the cost of things. The value of your time, the value of watching a video. Most people are like, yeah, but it's 48 minutes long. Here's an idea. You get something that is called, it is a Chrome, highly recommend Chrome. I went through all the browsers. It is called, first of all, highly recommend Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator. So when I go to Facebook, I don't even have any Facebook Facebook doesn't even pop up to me. This is what Facebook looks like. Nothing. There's no news feed. There's no news. There's nothing. I have 19 notifications. Just shows how many times I go on. I don't really care. Um, but it, it eradicates all Facebook. So you, it, like, I can't even scroll through it. So I don't know the news. I don't really care because it's always bad. I don't care, honestly, what my friends are doing. I have two birthday parties tonight. I'll find out in person what they're doing instead of through the internet. The second thing is what I was getting to, the reason that I really like this Chrome extension, it is called, where are you at? It speeds up the, oh, I can't find it. Whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll get you guys on another one. But essentially it is, uh, you can't really see it, but it speeds up the YouTube. So I can speed it up to three times because there's a lot of people that talk really slow and two times is not enough. Two times is like me talking normally. Three times it's sped up and I can really get things done because 48 minutes divided by three, what is that? That's 13, 14, I don't, I can't even, I'm not even doing the math right now, 15? What's three times 15? That's 45, okay. So yeah, it's 15 minutes instead of 50 minutes. Saves you a lot of time, especially even on my videos, you should watch mine at 1.5 or two times the speed just to get it done and over with and just get that one thing. But this is what I'm talking about, value. Value in the, in the sense that I'm watching, I'm, already, I'm only 14 minutes in, and Ray Dalio brought up something that literally the value, even if I just got that one thing out of 14 minutes and I still have another 30 minutes left, say I get nothing in those 30 minutes, people will say, what a waste of time. What a waste of time. I, I got something in the first 14, but the last 30 minutes were crap. I think of it differently. I think of it as a whole part, and I say, I just got that one thing, and that one thing is worth monumental amounts of money. Okay, so you have, to, you have to look at the value that that one thing brought, not, I didn't get 10 things out of this book. You know, I, I, I read this book, act as if. And the same thing with this book. Like, this is Ray Dalio's book. It's pretty thick, okay? If I get one thing, I know I'm gonna get a lot more because this is 20 years, he said, of him writing down his principles. But if he, link is below, I get paid on it. Um, just throwing that out there because people are like, why don't you tell us? I'm like, I get like 19 cents, okay? Um, <laughs> sorry, I brought you 30 minutes of knowledge for 19 cents. My, my deepest condolences. Um, sorry that Jeff Bezos couldn't add an extra zero to his bank account. So what Ray Dalio said on this was he said that he's leaving. So there's three parts of his life. So number one is just learning. Number two is acting. So learning is usually until probably about 25. You're learning everything. You're learning what you want to do, what you want to focus on, what your mission in life is, what you don't like, which is very important. And then from 25 to about, he, I, I don't know how, Ray, Ray's probably in his 50s. 25 to 50 or 55, 60, whatever you want to do, you are literally doing that. You just, you just accumulate the wealth, the knowledge, the expertise you build during that time frame. And then afterwards, which Ray said he's in right now, the third stage, so I don't kick the camera again, the third stage is what he's in is he's watching other people grow their wealth because he's already, he's already accumulated the wealth. He's already accumulated, um, you know, just the knowledge, the expertise, the, the, the fundamentals, the business, because he has 1,500 employees. He has a $160 billion fund that he manages. I think the guy knows a thing or two, and he built it all up, and he was a caddy like me. So he said he's in the third stage, and then he said something that was what I took away, and I don't care if I get anything else, but he said he was building his company for multiple generations. How many people build a company for multiple generations? You know how about 10 minutes ago I said, or even five, whatever it was, five, whatever, I said that you should not take investors' money because they need an exit. They give you 10 million, they expect 20 million in whatever amount of time, or way more than that, depending, you know, obviously, you know, probably more than that, 50 million, whatever the exit strategy is. However, they want an exit strategy. And then when you have an exit strategy, you give up control to shareholders, you give it, or if you sell it, you just give up control. And, and someone else takes it off, takes it out. And if it's good, then it keeps on running, but under the umbrella of someone else. Or 
Some people buy it and then they just smother it and they just say, listen, I don't want any competition or they absorb some of the operations or things like that and then they let go of people. I want to build this company right here for multiple generations. So that's why I'm here on a Saturday. That's why I just, you know, th that's why watching someone like Ray, who's been in the business for 40 years and has seen everything, knows how to manage, knows how to lead, knows how to sell, knows how to influence. Not only is the book, which obviously $20, people are like, yeah, but it's 20 bucks. I'm like, are you kidding me? 20 bucks to learn from Ray Dalio? Like, that's insane. That's crazy. That's like just... Can we just think about that for a second? You are spending $20. That's it. That's how much? Two lunches? Like, if you didn't go two lunches, but Ray Dalio said, here's my book for free, you'd be like, uh, okay, cool, thanks. Or you still eat those two lunches and you get Ray Dalio's principles that he's been writing for the last 20, 25 years. I don't know. I, I, I don't understand people's logic when they, when they bring up either price. I understand price. But if I get, like, clearly $20 isn't a lot of money. But if there was a seminar, like Tony Robbins' seminar was, uh, his business mastery was $10,000. $10,000. Okay, I spent $10,000 to see the big tooth, six foot five guy, or whatever the, his height is, talk about business for a week. And by the way, there's accommodations and airfare and flight and, and eating and whatever. So it's closer to $12,000. $12,000. Did I get $12,000? No. However, what I did get was that, uh, I mean, listen, I don't know. It was two years ago. Maybe I did. I have no idea. However, what I could say is that I did walk away with an appreciation of things like selling on stage. So he brought on some people that were not good speakers. And this is funny, is that I, most people would say, oh, I didn't get my $12,000 worth. I got one thing. That was that when I am on stage and I am speaking in the future is that I am not gonna be like these typical stage speakers because I got a bad taste in my mouth from these guys. So I actually did get way more than $12,000 because I said, I don't wanna do that. Okay, most people would say, what did I get? I'm saying what I got that I don't wanna do, which is be someone on stage that says, buy my book, here's my, here's my story and here's how I'm blah, blah, blah. Imagine if I was like that on this YouTube channel, I'd be like everyone else. Like, Let's just, not, not to like, oh, let's pat Charles on the back, but like, let's just think about everyone else that's in the space, like even say Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez is closing out his program for what, another six days? Like I'm closing out my program. It's like, dude, why, like, we're way too smart. Just, just say, I have a program and you should watch it. It's amazing. Instead of, I'm closing it out. Like that sales tactic is like 1950s. Like this is a limited edition. This is one weekend only. Like that works in a store, but not online when you put way too much time and effort into it. Anyway, that's my rant on it. So that was my realization on Ray Dalio is building it out for a legacy. Continuing on is, so I have a couple things written down here on my computer. This is why I like the longer form. I actually really like this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if you do, cool. If you don't, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know, just don't watch it again. Guess that's it. So I'm, I'm actually between names on lifestyling or lifestyled as this. Like, I love the word lifestyle. I already have BPI lifestyle for the company. And then this might be called when it goes live and we can get questions or whatever, um, is lifestyling or lifestyled, you know, hashtag. All right. We understand Charles move on. Okay. So this is what I wrote down is number one is you have to have a vision. You know, I, how can I, I'll pull it up on my, on my computer, but this is my, my vision on where, and it took me, listen, I don't know how, I don't know your age, okay? But I can tell you right now is that you have to have at least a relatively cloudy idea on where you want to go. Just relatively cloudy. Just not like, this is the direction. This is what I want to do. Jeff Bezos has stated it. When he started Amazon in, what, 95? He wrote a shareholder's letter in 1998. Go, back, go and Google it. And he said, I'm not, we're doing this for the long term. We're, yes, we are going public. However, we're not doing it for the shareholders and we are not, we're not looking towards short term, short term gains. And you know what he's done? This is funny. This is ironic. He's produced pretty much the same shareholder letter saying the same thing. We're looking towards the long term and, and look where Amazon is pretty much in every marketplace. All right. This is the biggest thing is that he actually lived up to it. Okay. So this is what he's actually doing. I, am forgetting what he was supposed to do. Oh, this is what happened. So he would make a ton of money 
And this is the thing is, Amazon really hasn't been profitable, okay? They've been literally just, every money they take, they put right back into the business, okay? They really have, if you look at their, their actual net profit, it's very minimal. And like, yeah, they'll obviously, yes, they'll have a profit. However, when he's, any time that he, he actually gets mad when he makes a profit because what he does is he takes that money and then he puts it back into the business. And when he puts it back into the business, it, like he'll get mad if he makes, I don't know, like a hundred or $200 million. And he'll take that 200 million and actually get mad and say, we need to do something. We need to do something with this money. Stop like, and I'm not saying like, that's good. Cause that's not good for most companies. Cause they're not as just forward thinking and as management and scaling ability as, as Jeff Bezos. Like the, the guy is literally an alien for what he has done in the last 20 years. Like it is freak, freak of nature that he's done. Like when you start studying business, how he has been able to scale, like that word scale, like I didn't understand what that meant, but that means when you're in a McDonald's or a Hilton or a Chipotle or any other national brand, you know, Macy's in LA, it's going to be very similar, if not the exact same as in New York, because they do the same processes. And that's why when I heard Ray Dalio say that he, he has built a company, sorry, he has built a company for beyond his death, that is exactly what I, like, I literally took that away. I'm like, that's exactly what I need to do. I need to build and scale and have the systems in place that it's way beyond my death. All right, so moving on, let's go. I don't know why my, my thing is blinking. My, it says I'm, I'm, what is it? My thing shut off after 20 minutes or it turns into uh, my camera. That's what I'm talking about, Charles. Okay, so this is my, this is essentially my, I don't know, it's, it's a little blurry. There we go. It's coming into focus. All right. So that's my vision. That's my personal vision on what I want to do. And I actually got this, took it from Walt Disney. Walt Disney, if you go in and you, you see how he charted, charted, he, he, he made a chart of how everything was going to be connected within Disneyland and Disney World or whichever one was first. It was unbelievable. You need to have a cloudy vision of where you want to take your life, your business, your mission, your goal, especially if you're a guy, like you need to have a mission. Like you, you, like, I, I don't understand these guys that either make excuses or they make, uh, just the, these, these just, just terrible, just, oh, well, I'm just doing the job, just doing it. Oh, great. Are you just also doing things with your wife and your kids and, just like doing it. Oh yeah. Just like kind of just in a relationship with my wife and kind of just in a relationship with my girlfriend and my, like, dude, like get passionate, find out what you like, fuck all those things that are sucking your energy out, which I'm going to get to in a second and have at least a basic idea of what you want to get into. And then just say, this is what I like to do. And if you like to do it, awesome. If, or if you like me being in this, the biggest thing is, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, I uh, said something very recently and I completely, I, I'm exactly, exactly what he was talking about is he said, we're living our lives, or I used to be like this. We're living our lives on someone else's terms. And I was like, holy cow, that is true. That is true. I was living my terms on, so, on my parents, on society, on my friends, on social media. Like what did social media say? How did I react to it? Like to be able to get to the point that you don't care, you have to go so down into the rabbit hole of what you like to do, gaming, coding, apps, selling, marketing, video, production, audio, podcasting, whatever it is, you have to go so far into that rabbit hole that literally you look up and you're like, I'm already here. Like, if you wanna come follow me, awesome, but it took me a decade to get to this point. All right, so how do you get to this point? Let's go into a little practical advice. Number one is you have to have the energy to do it. You have to have the energy to do it. You have to, you have to. What is this? This is water, water. This is the fabric of life, fabric. This is the core of life. Yes, there's oxygen and carbon and whatever other molecules, someone way smarter than me fill in the blanks. However, without water, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be groggy. You're not gonna sleep well. Your skin is gonna look terrible. Your teeth, everything, your hair, everything is, completely, I, I'm sorry, I, because I don't want to put it on you, I have been completely transformed since I've been drinking. This is, if I have four of these, it's a gallon a day, okay? Do I have four every single day? No, but I make an attempt to just drink. I don't drink when I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty right now because I've been talking for 21 minutes. However, 
after this, I'm going to easily go through this. I have a, a, a ride tomorrow that's 100 miles. I have to drink at least three gallons of water because I'm going to be sweating and peeing out the rest and all the toxins and all the other things. Water is the, gosh, you like, I, I had no idea. If you did one thing for your life, yeah, exercise is amazing. Eating is right. Drink more water. What does that do? Number one is your body, when it inflames, is usually when you're dehydrated. Like when I'm dehydrated, my face gets fat. When you drink alcohol, your face gets fat. Yes, it's because you're drinking alcohol and it's fattening, but your face like needs water. So when, when you actually drink, you get thinner. You don't want to eat as crappily because it's not soda or something else. Why does soda come with pizza? Because it's like, fuck it, I'm already eating pizza. Why not just have soda? Or when you're at a birthday, uh, I, I never understood the kid. Like, I, I hate he seeing Instagram stories where people are feeding their kids cookies. Like, I'm literally saying that's cocaine to the kids. You're addicting to the kids to sugar. Ugh. This is what I recommend you do. Go one week without eating sugar. Just one week. And I'm not saying fructose, even though that could be, fructose is essentially like strawberries and, you know, fruit, okay? That's natural sugar from a fruit. I'm not saying that. I mean breads and pastas that are completely, just go one week and then go the following week where you have a bunch of it, okay? You will see a radical difference. When I eat sugar, when I don't drink water, when I, my sleep is affected, my focus is affected, my energy is affected, my happiness, everything, my productivity, the way that I sell, the way that I am, the way that I, just like everything changes. It's, it's, it is freaking crazy. Obviously there's science behind it. And they say that the same part of the brain lights up when you have, when someone does cocaine, was it cocaine or heroin or something, as when they eat sugar, like pure sugar, like high fructose corn soup. High fructose, just watch the movie, that sugar movie. That's, that's all you, just like, if you get one thing out of this video, just please watch that documentary. I think it's 10 bucks on Amazon or 15 bucks on Amazon. And that's the thing, people are like, it's $15 on Amazon. Yeah, well, when you have diabetes, your costs are gonna be like $25,000. You're just, the, the loss of productivity is gonna be $100,000. Watch that and put some of it to, like actually take action on it. Like don't watch these videos. That's why Ray Dalio put out this book because he's like, listen, I have done all this, but what most people do, and I'm not saying anything like uh, Zuckerberg or, or you know, any of these other guys that are up there, you know, uh, Musk or Bezos, but a lot of these guys, they get up to this level and then like Ray Dalio was saying in this is they haven't left anything for the next generation. Like imagine if Andrew Carnegie or Carnegie, however you want to say it, or Rockefeller actually left their principles. I think there is a book out there with one of them. Was it the Rockefeller? I know there's a book called Rockefeller Habits. Highly recommend that. It's also in Rockefeller Center, which is a block away from here. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I moved offices a while ago. Uh, it's about eight blocks north of here, Rockefeller Center. And they have his Rockefeller Habits on the outside. It's actually amazing. At, in, in the center where they do the ice skating, so anyone outside New York City knows what I'm talking about. That area, the ice skating rink area even though it's the middle of September, so it's not out yet. But what Ray Dalio was saying is that his principles that he learned, imagine if he had that before. So I'll just bring up energy. Uh, another thing is that, that Bezos, look, look at the, the picture when he was in 1998 and right now, like there's a side by side. He noticed that for him, uh, Elon Musk as well, is that they've noticed that if they wanna go as far into their life as they can, Steve Jobs died at what, 54, 55? Imagine, imagine. Oh, if that guy was alive another like six years, imagine where technology would be. Like he brought things from 98, 2000, like the iPad and the App Store and obviously the iPhone and the iPad. Like imagine this device, if he was alive, would be freaky. He didn't take care of his health. It was more mental health for, for him. And unfortunately, it killed him. And that's the thing is, is I, I guarantee everyone in the entire, even Bill Gates, Bill Gates like retired shortly after or, or shortly right before because he noticed that his health was getting affected and he didn't want to go down the same hole that uh, Steve Jobs does, it, it was, which was he just stressed out and just, just mentally was not able to, to take his legacy as far as he wanted to go because of the health. And I guarantee a lot of the guys on the West Coast, they thought the exact same thing. They said, I get to eat right. I got to get my health handled. I need to get my mindset right to be able to live another 20, 30 years beyond where I 
say Steve Jobs. Imagine Elon Musk living another 30 to 40 years. The guy's still young. He's like 46 or 45 or something like that. Like the guy is super young. And imagine him another 40 years. How far he's taken humanity already. Okay. So health is everything. So number one is just the basics to health. What you intake is as important as what you do during the day, okay? So obviously, in other words, what I'm saying is that like if you take in a bunch of crap and you're really active, perfect. But I'd rather you watch what you intake because that has a monumental, more, I, I feel more monumental effect than if you move, like you could just move like a minute amount and you'll be relatively fine. But if you eat just a l real bad, just a little bit, like, your bodies are your bodies. Your inside of your body is just going to be shredded, just completely shredded. Okay. Water. And I'm just going to move on to this. This is completely different. This is something that I just wrote down, which is just start. Okay. So I brought out my, I produced my blog and everyone, of course, on this channel goes, well, it's not personal development. And it's, and then when my friend saw it, it's there, you're talking too much. And then I put out the next vlog. And then obviously you guys were saying, I wish there was more personal development. And then I, the people publicly said, I, this is perfect. So it's like, listen, just start. Now we're going to have a basic idea. We're going to have a beginning, middle, and end. We're going to have the phone calls. We're going to have the meetings. And then we're going to have appointments. I can't afford a full-time videographer. They're expensive, especially really good ones, especially the equipment and everything else that we want to do. All right. So number one is just start, just start. So how do you just start? Okay. I just, just started for the last year talking about doing a daily vlog. And I actually did some daily vlogs and it's on CB vlogs and they're terrible. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was self vlogging. It was edited by me. This is what I could say is that to just start the reason I'm, I have a hundred, I don't want to ride a hundred miles tomorrow cause I want to do work. However, I signed up. So a race, a marathon, a, whatever, whatever it is, like buy the product or hire the person or get tickets to that class or that seminar. Now you have to go. Now you have to start. Now that vlog is happening because I hired the guy. Like that's the accountability you need. If you're going to the gym, have an accountability partner. In other words, have a workout buddy because there's going to be times that you're going to want to go, but he doesn't want to go or he wants to go and you don't want to go. You're going to literally have to have the dichotomy of that and then you both go because one wants to go and you're like, I'm held accountable.